Could you create a sourdough bread with $50 champagne instead of water to create the most expensive bread there is? How would such a bread taste? This definitely could be the next big thing for the richest people on the planet. I definitely had to try and show you. Because what could possibly go wrong? Gluntag. This is another crazy bread experiment and thanks to you I reached 100,000 subscribers here on YouTube. Yes, I'm looking at you. Seriously, thank you for all the support. It has been a hell of a ride with lots and lots of crazy experiments. Including a fruit fly sourdough bread. Lots and lots of very very epic bread. And not to forget so many cool interactions with other bakers. So the recipe for the champagne dough was rather simple. I would just use my default sourdough recipe but instead of using water I would be using around 300 grams of champagne. Then I added around 8 grams of salt, 400 grams of flour and 10% sourdough starter. I would just put everything together directly and then mix it in my stand mixer. I like to start on low speed and then I increase the speed. What helps a lot sometimes is to just let your dough sit for 5 minutes and take a break. The dough is done kneading when I see the dough lets go of the edges of the container. What I then always do is I extract a small piece of the dough. This is my fermentation sample. This tells me exactly when the dough is done. The fermentation now started since we added the sourdough starter. Now most recipes tell you wait for x hours, but that simply doesn't work when it comes to sourdough. You have to read your dough. And this small trick extracting a piece of the dough is a big game changer. Since I'm using a sourdough starter that's relatively stiff, I can safely aim for a doubling in size. If you have a more sour sourdough starter, then that doesn't work. But a stiff starter really makes many things so much more simple. That's why when you're just getting started with sourdough baking, I definitely recommend you to try out a stiff starter. Yeah, so all has been extracted and then I waited for the dough to double in size. And then this happened. Let me show you. Nothing happened. <laughs> The dough didn't increase in size at all. Check this out. This is how the dough looks like. No size increase, nothing. No signs of fermentation. This didn't work at all. But I have another idea. I have a hypothesis. So my dough sample two days in and look what happened. It suddenly started to increase in size. This is really odd, isn't it? So let's try this one more time. And this time we are gonna be using a nice delicious rum to make the final bread. Let's see if that's actually gonna work out or not. So based on my calculation for the champagne, I used 300 milliliters of champagne <clears throat> having around 20% alcohol. So in total, I used 36 grams of alcohol. Now for the rum, this one has 37.5% alcohol. So then I did a little bit of calculation here and apparently I need to use 96 grams of rum plus 204 grams of water to land on 300 grams in total. Then I have the same amount of alcohol and I want to know now whether the problem was caused by the sulfites or the actual alcohol. Let's see. So let's make our rum dough now. 96 grams of rum. 204 grams of water. 40 grams of sourdough starter. 400 grams of flour. I think I already drank too much. Definitely added too much flour. 8 grams of salt. Now I'm kneading this again and let's see if this dough is actually gonna start fermenting or not. The smell this dough has so good. I would love to drink the dough now. Mm. <laughs> so what do you think happened? Exactly the same thing happened as with the champagne dough. The dough didn't really increase in size at all. So it seems that the high level of alcohol is actually slowing things down quite a lot. So lesson learned, let's try this again, slightly different. German mode style. I went on a trip to Denmark and returned home with a little bit of beer. And I figured why not try making another dough just with beer. Because the beer had around 5% alcohol. This way I would know whether the alcohol was actually the issue. And oh boy, I really made an amazing bread. The bread turned out beautifully. The fermentation was slower, but in the end the bread really convinced. The crumb was really nice and open. The bread had excellent open spring. All the properties that I'm looking for in a great bread. Wow, beautiful crumb.
So yeah, it seems that the alcohol is actually causing the issue. So let's try this one more time, reducing the amount of champagne that we use for the next bread. I had to use my credit card one more time because I already drank the last champagne that I had in the previous bottle. So with this new bottle of champagne, I hoped by lowering the alcohol, by just using a little bit less champagne, mixing that with water, that we would have better results. Being me, I of course have to quickly go to my whiteboard again and do the math. Okay, let me explain you this math. We want to have around 4.2% alcohol. Why 4.2? The magic number of the universe. We have 400 grams of flour, 320 grams of liquid, 4.2%, this number, of 320, that's 13.44 grams of alcohol, roughly. So this means that we need to use around 112 grams of champagne and then 208 grams of water. Let's make the dough. And yeah, then we made another dough. I extracted the sample again. And let me show you what happened. And voila, dough has been kneaded, sample has been extracted, and please, please, my dough, ferment now, please increase in size. Let's see if it's gonna happen. Yes, 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 yes. <laughs> it seems that the lower amount of alcohol has actually helped now. Our sample is increasing in size, so we can finally make a bread out of this. After 12 hours, I'm taking the dough from the fridge and it's ready to be baked. This dough is looking beautiful and let's bake it. Let me show you the final result. And voila, our final result. Beautiful looking sourdough bread. I can't wait to taste this. Oh, wow, beautiful bread. Mm, the scent is so good. This is so good. So the crust is great. It has this slight tang. It's super soft. It's the perfect play of different consistencies. And there's this really tiny subtle note of champagne. It's really very good. Now something really crazy and mouthwatering is incoming that I need to show you. The bread tasted great, but I think the champagne taste could improve a little bit. It didn't taste like champagne that much after all. I have a really great idea to tweak this bread even further. And for that, I'm reaching out to my French friend, Gaëtan. So listen to this. Bonjour Gaëtan, j'ai compris this cheese from your city and I'm wondering how to best make it in the oven. Please send me your thoughts, thanks. Salut Hendrik, so a very simple way that you can bake the long cheese, simply put it in a small container such as this one, a little bit bigger because you don't want the cheese to overflow, then you put it inside the oven for about 20 minutes at 180 degrees Celsius. Once it's ready, you can just take some pieces of bread or potatoes and you can dip it directly inside the melted cheese. Enjoy! I wish you could smell this. <laughs> oh, the aroma this cheese has, it's so intense. Are you hungry yet? <laughs> mm. I'm dying. <laughs> this is so, so good. Mm. This is incredible. 
Now I need your help. Just looking at the price tag, I use around $5 off champagne for a single bread. What do you think should I price the bread in my bakery? Also just continuing on the experiment train, do you have some other ideas that I should experiment on? Please write a comment in the comment section below. And if you're commenting, you're getting the chance to win a cool bread shirt like this one. So thank you very much for watching. Thank you for all the support. And as always, may the gluten be with you. I'm still here. <laughs>